So a lot of people ask, what is the one upgrade that should be added to a carbine? What is the one accessory, the one attachment that should be purchased? And if you can only afford one, which is it? There's a lot of speculation whether that should be a red dot or aftermarket trigger, and then other accessories, grips, lights, lasers, and things like that. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and run a couple little demonstrations for you guys showing you what is the one attachment that I recommend everyone should get before any other upgrade. So, obviously very hard to see what's going on. I couldn't tell this guy had a gun until I was about two feet away, three feet away. Hits are good, got one up here. I uh, shot one other target over here. All right, thankfully that was a threat. So what happened on that drill is I had to move through looking at each individual target and my first target I engaged, I could not see anything. I was taking a guess. And in that situation with zero light on the target, that could have been someone holding a duffel bag. I was just going off of kind of rough shape, not seeing any arms. They were kind of in like they were holding something. It was an AK-47, but it could have been something completely harmless. So in that situation, I should have not taken shots on that target. And then the second target I took shots on, I was about two feet away. So even though I had an awesome red dot, red dot sight at some other like little things on this gun, that was a horrible situation to be in. So what I've added to this gun is a Surefire M600 Scout, and I just have iron sights. I'm not even running a red dot on this gun. I'm running just the weapon light. We're going to run the same type of drill with new targets now that I don't know what's down there, where they are, and we're gonna see what it looks like in comparison. All right, so we got a lot of non-threats up here in the front. This guy's good to go. All center mass, all in the Charlie zone, a couple in the hands where his gun is. Saw I had a potential pass through when I first hit, uh, saw this target, first identified him with this guy. So I moved over to engage him from the front of that vehicle. I've got four, one in the heart, three in the Charlie here, uh, one in the gun down on the side of the body, and I'm good to go. And all that was possible, being able to identify everything, getting the proper information, being able to engage further back, not even move all the way forward, because I had a weapon light. And having iron sights didn't hinder me too much, but I was able to run this drill, not hit any bystanders, and I was good to go. So why should the weapon light be the first, first attachment you do if you have to pick and choose between, say, an optic or a weapon light? Well, it's not just our word or because we've shown you a drill in low light. If you look at statistics, as recent as 2017, um, more violent type crimes where there's victims, where people you know, suffer an attack, such as rape, murder, uh, aggravated assault, those things generally or statistically have a higher percentage of happening later in the day when it's dark out. Uh, criminals don't like uh, doing stuff when there's witnesses around. They like to be able to get away with things. So being able to see what you need to see and making good decisions with that light, it's probably a good idea to have the weapon light attached to the gun for ease of use and making sure you're able to see what you need to see. So with all of that said, our number one recommendation for an upgrade to a carbine 
is a white light. Even if you have iron sights, even if you don't have an optic, even if you have a mil spec trigger, even if you have a basic mil spec stock, nothing fancy, your number one priority should be adding a white light. A concern people have when adding a light to their weapon is if, if I activate the light, I'm gonna give my position away. That speaks to a point of overuse of a tool. Regardless if it's a light, the optic, or what have you, uh, we wanna make sure we implement the tool in a proper manner. We don't overuse it or underuse it. Another example to give you would be using your red dot or your scope or your optic. You're not gonna be hunting through the scope the entire time you're using it. You're looking over that so you're getting all the visual information you could possibly get, identifying a threat, and then using the optic to deal with that threat. So bringing the point back to the topic of weapon lights, we're going to use the light and turn it on or activate it when we need to see something or check an area uh, and the light goes back off and then we can move or we think we see something, we use the light to identify that threat or no threat and from there we can make a decision because we're actually getting that visual information from actually lighting it up and getting detail. When we're done with that, with that problem, we can turn the light off and continue on. So there's obviously a lot of white lights on the market and something that's really important to understand is if this is the most important attachment you're putting on your gun initially, it's important that you get something reliable and something that's uh, good quality and something that has good battery life. Uh, we're not talking about just going onto eBay and buying the cheapest you know, visible light you can find that's $30 that kind of clips onto the gun. You know, is that going to stay on the rail? Does it have good battery life? Does it put out good lumens? Uh, is it going to hold up in recoil of your weapon as you are shooting? There's a lot of options out there, but I will say it's as simple as potentially taking a good handheld light and literally taping it to the gun. That's something that I've done to my FAL. It's something I've done to other guns in the past. It's something that I've also done to our little 9mm AK. So you don't have to have the most awesome, fanciest, perfect mount system for your gun. It's as simple as taping it on and making sure you have a way to hit that button, activate that light. But let's look at a couple options. You obviously have you know, some cost-effective options like the Streamlight series. These are uh, pretty inexpensive. They come with a lot of different pressure pad options and they mount to quad rails very easily and M-Lock and key mod, things like that. You also have Surefire, which is obviously a, a very big name brand, something that we recommend. It's something that I ran on this gun for the demo, this M600. This is a small little Scout. You also have newer lights. You have the Mod Light series, which is using uh, new uh, rechargeable batteries that puts out a little bit more, a little bit more lumens, and it's something you can obviously recharge from home and keep using the same batteries if you're, you know, someone who wants to be all efficient and not buy a bunch of, uh, you know, the red Surefire batteries. And then you have other lights like this uh, Cloud Defensive Owl, which is obviously very large and has a very positive button on top. You can stick it around top of the gun, extremely foolproof and very durable. You can also do what some folks have done is take a pistol light like the Surefire X300, throw it at 12 o'clock right onto your gun, uh, on your quad rail, onto your whatever you have, and then activate those buttons with your thumb. So if you are on a budget, this might actually be a really good option. You can throw it on your carbine when you need it. You can throw it on your pistol when you need it. Uh, so you have an option for both of your weapons. Uh, and I highly recommend all the information that we've given tonight. It also applies to handgun. Um, having something for your handgun because again you can't shoot what you can't see so you could have a handheld but at the same time if I can run a weapon light I can shoot it a little more effectively. The second attachment that we recommend when you're building out or prioritizing accessories for your rifle would be an optic of some sort. Having an optic on the gun is going to make aiming for you a lot easier. You get the light activated instead of lining up you know your iron sights they could be darker you've got a bright reticle that your eye can catch you can aim efficiently and, and get good hits. With that being said, there are a lot of options on the market. One to sixes, red dots, EOTech, aim point. There's, there's a lot of different options. What we will recommend is that you read up on each of these and find out which one's gonna best suit your needs. So after you fully equipped your gun with your lights, your lasers, your suppressors, your optics, your special stocks, your weird skeletonized lowers, your heartbeat sensors, your grenade launchers, all that fun stuff, it's important to understand that if you don't train, you're not gonna have the skills, and if you suck, you suck.
everyone should be able to own these. Change my mind. <laughs>